Hello, good morning once again. Welcome to our oral communication in context class. We are now on the quarter one week three. Still, I'm your teacher, Mrs. Lori A. Develos. For this week, we're about to discuss strategies to avoid communication breakdown. After going through this module, you are expected to number one, define the concept of communication breakdown. Number two, identify the different kinds of barriers to effective communication. Number three, explain the causes of communication breakdown. And the last one is use appropriate strategies to avoid communication breakdown and achieve the goals of relationship and community building. For your learning task one, identify the reasons for the communication breakdown in each picture. Write your answer in a separate sheet of paper similar to the box below. Now, this activity can be found on page 29 in your module. Now, why is it that there are instances in our life that we have a not so good relationship with our friends? No? Bakit kaya tayo nagkakaroon ng misunderstanding? That is what I mean. Through communication, you will be misunderstood, so misunderstanding happen. The elements involved in communication are important in the success or failure of this process. These very same elements, so who are or what are those elements? We have the sender, the message, the receiver, and then the feedback can pose a threat to the efficiency or effectiveness of the process. So, there are instances na kung saan hindi tayo na iintindihan ng ating kausap. So, yung mga elements na yon or isa ka sa mga elements na yon since ikaw ang sender, how about the message na gusto mong iparating sa kanya? Sino nga ba ang iyong receiver? At ano ang maaari niyang maging feedback sa message mo na yon? So, I hope that after discussing the barriers to communication, misunderstanding will be eliminated. Okay, the first one is the physical barriers are the natural or environmental condition that act as a barrier in communication in sending the message from sender to receiver. So, from the name itself, physical barriers. Ano-ano kaya ang mga yun? O, ayan. People talking too loud, noise from a construction site, loud sound of a karaoke, or blaring of jeepney horns. So, ibig sabihin, kapag sinabi natin physical barriers, yung sobrang lakas na ingay. Hindi ka maiintindihan or naintindihan ng kausap mo because sa sobrang lakas ng ingay sa inyong paligid. Next, we have the psychological barriers are called as mental barriers. This refer to social and personal issues of a speaker towards communicating with others. Examples, you have the trauma, shyness, lack of confidence, depression, fear, or stage fright. Diba? Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi natin psychological barriers, naandoon ito sa speaker. Nahihiya siya. Wala siyang tiwala sa kanyang sarili nadidepress, may takot or na trauma kaya. So, yun yung mga dahilan kung bakit hindi niya na i-deliver ng maayos ang message. Next, we have the cultural barriers pertain to communication problems encountered by people regarding their intrinsic values, beliefs, and traditions in conflict with others. People's culture affect the way they communicate and relate to others. Examples, different beliefs, traditions and customs, manners of dressing, and speaking. So, pare-parehas man tayong Pilipino, pero meron tayong iba-ibang paniniwala at tradisyon. So, that can affect the way we communicate with others. Next, Linguistic barriers pertain conflicts with regard to language and word meanings because words carry denotative and connotative meanings they can sometimes cause confusion 
and misunderstanding. Meaning of words and symbols also vary depending on culture. So, yon. Examples, difference in language, accent and dialect, use of jargon and slang, speech defects or language impairments. So, di ba? I know na kayo minsan ay na nabubuli or binubuli ninyo ang ilan sa mga classmates ninyo. I know that you are very familiar with this ay bisaya, di ba? So, that is an example of linguistic barriers. Lalong-lalo na kapag gumamit ng jargon. What do you mean when you say jargon? Yung mga malalalim na salita and slang. Or kung kaya naman ay may speech defects, di ba? One example of that is yung hirap sa pagsasalita. So, this is considered or these are considered as uh, communication barriers. Next, and external noises are the sight, sound, and other stimuli that draw people's attention away from intended meaning. Examples, noise from vehicles, singing at the neighborhood, visual aids in front of the classroom, the dog barking, and then the sound of airplane. Similar po siya sa physical barriers. Next, internal noises are the thoughts and feelings that interfere with meaning. Examples, confrontation with a friend, fear of speaking in front of the class, and racial prejudice. So, this is an example or similar to psychological barriers. Diba? Yung internal noise na nasa sayo or nasa kalooban mo. Next, we have, so this is the last one, we have the semantic noises are the alternate meanings aroused by a speaker's symbol. The idea means that a word may have another meaning in the minds of the students. This is affected by the language in which they grew and the culture in which they are exposed. Una, or examples are incorrect grammar, using excessive technical jargon, and using idiomatic expressions na kung saan mas lalong nakagulo sa kaisipan ng iyong mga listeners. Okay, so that's all for the barriers of communication. I hope that it is clear now to you. For your learning task to identify the kind of communication barrier is simplified by each description. Tell whether it is psycholog physiological, psychological, cultural, or linguistic barrier. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. This activity can be found on pages 31 to 32 of your module. Congratulations everyone!